Hmm. Okay, we can start. So before we take up the reading, let's just in gather ourselves for uh, a minute or so, bringing the mind home and the body and invoking Mother and Sri Aurobindo so on. Yeah, so a very good topic uh, for all of us. Since all of us are most of the time involved in wrong thinking, so I think it would be nice to read about it like, finally and maybe see uh, what are all the possibilities. Yeah. Okay, so if anyone would like to read the first bit, please go ahead. So I can read it. Uh, the feeling of illness is at first only a suggestion. It becomes a reality because your physical consciousness accepts it. It is like a wrong suggestion in the mind. If the mind accepts it, it becomes clouded and confused and has to struggle back into harmony and clearness. It is so with the body, consciousness and illness. You must not accept but reject it with your physical mind and also help the body Consciousness to throw off the suggestion. If necessary, make a counter suggestion. No, I shall be well. I am and shall be all right. Yeah, thank you. So many a times we see that uh, some of us are very naturally optimistic. Uh, we don't have to put effort into making ourselves, ha ha, I'm While some of us ha have more this tendency of having, especially we are talking about illness and disease and everything. So some of us have a tendency that we think that, oh my God, what would happen now, now that I have fallen? And I'm going to fall ill, this has happened. So this is, I've seen that this is a very common, uh, like people are either to belonging to this category or that category. I've seen with myself also, with others in the family also. And uh, to some it comes naturally, the optimism about health and I shall be well. But when we say naturally it comes to them, it doesn't mean that they have not put effort. So we are looking at this, just this life and maybe they have put effort in the previous life and that's why they are here today. So if I find myself in this condition that by naturally I feel that, oh, what would happen now? How will I get well? So then I have to put effort in cultivating and affirming that it goes and seeps into my consciousness that, no, I shall be well. I, I am well. And I remember the first time I was diagnosed and I just got connected randomly with someone. And although I did not ever get into touch with her again, but one thing which she shared just on the phone while I was just sharing my issue with her, and she said that you are completely fine. You know, just know that you are completely fine. Now that lady I never really got in touch with and did not consult as a therapist or as a healer but that some something changed within me i don't know that the confidence with which she shared that no you are fine you know that really resonated and kind of built up that light that we all want to have so uh and factually speaking i was not all right you know but 
but uh, there is something more than fat that we ask all the time. We are something beyond the fat. So when she said that, no, you are well, you just know that you are fine. That did something in me. So we have to cultivate. If we naturally we don't have this, then we have to cultivate, put effort, reaffirm and change that thought which we naturally may have, which may be a negative one. So any uh, reflections there, any experiences anyone wants to share? Yes. I think it's more or less true because uh, for many years I also struggled, uh, you know, through a lot of thoughts which upset me and things like that. And in 2018, it actually resulted in, uh, you know, a lot of psychosomatic illnesses actually. And uh, if though, uh, you know, it's taken a lot of effort to get over it uh, and uh, Fortunately, now things uh, from the physical illness point of view are all okay, but uh, it has been a struggle to, you know, get to the point that things are okay. Uh, it's been a real, real struggle, but th the point is, you know, how much of a concerted effort we make, the mind ultimately slips back. And I don't know how to, you know, make that jump that it will never slip back. That's where the struggle is as far as I'm concerned. So I, I'm still in that path only. I don't know how to get there, but hopefully should get there someday. It's a good one. I think all of us are here when what you share, you know, that it from time to time things happen and it slips back. But that's the point that we have to always, uh, no matter how long we may get back, you know, into our slippery slope, which happens with everyone, but the idea is to again spring back into an uplifted consciousness, which we know is the right thing. Yeah, I, I think it's a collective human challenge. And we all have the capacity, that's why the challenge is in front. Or also, when you share that, how long will it take for us to get there? You know, I think there also we have to see that Masters so far have said that you have to be constantly vigilant. I don't know a master who has said that once this is achieved, then you can relax your vigilance. So far, I have not read that. Neither with Kabirji. I have not seen it with Shirovindo, mother also. So it's very interesting to see that uh, nobody asks us to let go of our vigilance and effort. So uh, this has to go on just like it is going on right now, you know, and the only thing that keeps us motivated, all of us, is that uh, something in us knows that this is the right way. You know, what I am, no matter how much effort I am putting here, no matter how much of struggle it is there, but something in us know that, yes, you know, even if this was the last day of my life, I will put effort. You know, it's the right effort. We know that. So that's what we have to, I think that keep, keeps us motivated when we are on the right path. Yeah, anything more? Yeah, I uh, would, I really, you know, that sentence you said that I am more than fat. I think that's something that is really, really, really important. And without that, I think none of this is possible. If I just believe in logic, reasoning, fact, you know, how many times I have had the grace and the blessing to use this sentence that I'm well, to reject something which is beyond me. And how I have seen it leave me. I mean, it's, you know, we say we don't see miracles. It's just because we don't, we are not open to seeing them. Otherwise, it's nothing short of a, you know, miracle that you're feeling. I don't know. Something is coming or you're actually, it's totally hit. And still something in me is saying, but I'm all right. But I'm all right. And the way it cuts through. You know, it's like that there's this old mug and mug, I don't know what all. And then you're like, but I'm all right. 
and it's like you're just passing through you're just passing through some so much that could have sucked you that could have just delayed you that could have made you fall you know virenji correctly said at least slip you know it's very interesting how we use the word slip we don't say that okay this is where i belong and i am standing so that in itself that terminology is very reflective that i'm saying i'm slipping and who wants to slip right everybody wants to stand wants to be riding say a horse or something and when we actually re yeah get removed from where we are we say we slip yeah so yeah it's not just words it's like these are you know how mother says in sunlit path there is this beginning na ke don't take my words to be just mere words they are forces in action so when my being says truly says i'm well and i think even if it says without believing or if even if there is some confusion but if it persistently says i am well i reject i mean it's very 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 powerful so yeah Yeah, one more thing I had actually wanted to say was that a lot of time my well is just physical wellness, है ना कि just कि physically हाँ ये problem है और ये ठीक हो गई या ये नहीं हुई and see I said well and yet I was still not well kind of a thing and yet we are talking about things beyond physical also, right? Even if I might be not well physically, but if I have this thing that yes I am well, I am all right. like you suggested right factually it wasn't correct that remember you're all right and yet operating or being or even touching that space that no matter what i am all right i am taken care of everything is going towards a purpose that too is really reassuring and gives one a lot of strength you know strength that we all lack and need बिकॉज बहुत जल्दी वी स्लिप बहुत जल्दी वी गेट स्केर्ड और ये मेरा क्या होगा अरे यू नो एंड वी जस्ट स्पाइरल दो मूवमेंट्स टोट स्टिपेजेस तो एटलीस्ट वेन इज वन इज होल्डिंग दिस एज एन एंकर बट आई एम ऑल राइट दैट्स रियली रियली ग्राउंड एंड यू नो एंकर जस एंड एंकरिंग आई थिंक विच वी ऑल Yeah. Anything more? Anyone here? Anything? So we have to notice there is a word called the physical mind, and uh, I'm understanding that this relates with uh, whatever we are seeing. Through our senses, whatever we are understanding through our senses, and then responding to that trigger, and that becomes a pattern. So, physical mind is a mind of patterns. It's a mind of habits. Or yehi pe humko sabse zada apni we see that we have to work. You know that we have developed a habit of, uh, say, falling ill every time we do this or that, or every time this happens from outside. सो एक हैबिट की पड़ जाती है सो एंड दैट इज वाई एफर्मेशन हेल्प मेनी पीपल बिकॉज वेन वी आर राइटिंग दीज एफर्मेशन डाउन अगेन एंड अगेन अगेन एंड अगेन बिलियन टाइम्स मिलियन टाइम्स थाउजेंड टाइम्स देन इट सीप्स इन टू अवर कॉन्शियसनेस एंड वी आर एबल टू चेंज इट एट द हैबिट लेवल सो इट्स गुड टू सी दिस वर्ड हेयर That you must not accept but reject it with your physical mind. और यहाँ पे हमको थोड़ा काम करना पड़ता है यहाँ पे सिर्फ एक बार कह देने से नहीं चल जाता कि you know just like that. You know it has to slowly, 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 slowly go in. You know like trickles have to go in and permeate our consciousness 
सो दैट एट द हैबिट लेवल द हैबिट गेट्स चेंज एक नई अब आपको आदत होगी ये नई आदत क्या है दैट यू आर वेल ऑल द टाइम दिस इज द न्यू हैबिट earlier with every trigger you wanted to be ill why because something in us wanted always attention you know through being ill we want attention we want to be somebody in somebody's eyes koi to mera dhyan rakh le you know koi to mujhe attention dega so we don't even know how manipulative we are and we have developed a pattern this usually also get developed uh, during our childhood you know like as a child if i am uh, i am wanting attention of my parents or siblings or other people around me you know so you develop this habit of not being well and you would not admit it consciously that you are doing it that you are choosing not to be well no you would not admit it ki nahi nahi aise thodi na hota hai you know how can i choose not to be well so consciously i i am not choosing but subconsciously i want the others to give me attention and care so you develop a habit that every season or every this time you know uh, this phase in my life whenever it comes every month for example you know i have to uh, fall ill so that i get care and attention and this is the physical mind so it is a habit mind this has to get changed for some things it may be easier but for others it may take time so then when as you were sharing earlier that when the triggers come the same trigger comes which used to come earlier now nothing in my being accepts it you know now uska time jaise kat gaya it something like old age and it's called like old song you know now rarely do we listen to them so uska time ho gaya jo usne serve karna tha it has served we can also be grateful because that habit may be served you at some one point of time but now it is not needed anymore now even when you get ill nobody gives you attention and even if they give you attention you know you really it doesn't give you anything yeah please go ahead yeah so sorry i thought i you were taking the pause yeah i think this habit thing that you have said is really you know important and you said like habit of say getting attention subconsciously or something and even there is a tendency towards feeling i am helpless or i am the weak you know oh the body it is weak what to do now three people in the house are unwell mujhe to hona hi hai but you know how we just bow down our heads to those illness rather than bowing that head in front of where the head should be bowed so even this feeling this habit of no i am the master of my being or you know there is somebody else someone else my head is bowed down to is also habit which comes with this habit like if i am rejecting i am rejecting no i am not bowing down to you right i am strong and my strength is the sun for example right so i mean very symbolic and yet it is a habit of stumbling down and saying that poor me yeah and as shurubindo points at it that these are intruders of our spirit you know we think that we are doing a favor to ourselves by being victimized and wanting to be victimized feeling victimized that poor helpless me but actually uh, we don't even know that we are actually eating at us our own self from inside and the kisi ki isme win win situation kisi ki bhi nahi hai nobody is gaining in this neither is it a gain for anyone outside and it's a big loss for me where i am actually defending the part of me yeah. and for a long time we continue for a life once you know it, it can happen that even for a lifetime whole full, full lifetime you feel that you are a victim of situations and other people are the ones who are yeah making you whatever you are to do yeah if we look into it it's a very sad situation that time
and as in savitri shri aurobindo says that this mortal man he is, is his own worst foe and we prove this in uh, time and again that how we are our own worst enemy and we think that situations are not right and people are not right it's really very interesting hmm. so when we are saying that yes i shall be well i am and shall be all right that's where we are befriending ourselves you know i'm back to being my friend again and this is what we must actually do even when you know if this is about a physical assault while even when there are emotional mental assaults and one can have that a part of consciousness which is separated and from all that and begins to reiterate that yes you know it's just a pl- passing cloud i will go off uh, surge up again you know, i won't succumb i won't succumb even that affirmation at a mental emotional level when it is happening that also is very helpful because then you are not defending uh, those stories that want to come up and take their place you, know, you are not taking their side तो उसमें फिर आपके जो पुरानी वीकनेसेस हैं इम्परफेक्शंस हैं आप उनको उनकी साइड में ले रहे यू आर नॉट लिसनिंग टू देयर डिक्टेट दे मे बी देयर द रिपल्स मे बी देयर यू मे बी डाउन इन योर कॉन्शियसनेस बट वन पार्ट ऑफ यू शेयर दैट नो दिस इज अ पासिंग फेज एंड आई जस्ट लेट इट पास सो यू आर नॉट लिसनिंग टू द डिक्टेट्स ऑफ ओल्डर पैटर्न देयर ऑल्सो अगेन दिस हेल्प तो ये वही बात है कि हम अपने आप को कितना प्यार करते हैं एंड uh, प्यार क्यों करेंगे हायर एंड बिगिन टू सी दैट नो यू नो दिस इंस्ट्रूमेंट इज नॉट फॉर मी इट इज फॉर द डिवाइन वर्क तो आपका मन नहीं करेगा बार बार कि आप फिर से बीमार पड़ जाओ आपका मन करेगा नहीं मैं तंदुरुस्त ही रहूं यू नो सो दैट इज वर्क कैन गेट डन like a true servant what would he want he would not want to get ill again and again because then he can't serve the master so once the head is bowed down even to whatever relative degree you know then you know that no i won't want to get down again because i want to serve let this body be fit and healthy so that it continues to serve as long as it is alive ये होता है इवन इवन इन ह्यूमन केसेस व्हेन देयर इज अ सर्वेंट एंड अ मास्टर एंड देयर इज अ लॉयल्टी बिटवीन देम व्हाई वुड ही वांट दैट ही वुड नॉट बी एबल टू सर्व द मास्टर ही वुड से दैट मतलब बेशक लॉर्ड को जब भी जरूरत पड़े चाहे मैं कितना भी बीमार हूं आई शुड बी अवेलेबल तो मैं बीमार ही ना पड़ूं ऑन द वेरी फर्स्ट प्लेस and all of us are servants of the lord whether we believe it or not you know in whatever little sphere of our working we may we may not be very big like owning some companies and working but in whatever little sphere of our work where we are offering ourselves in family in our little spheres outside the family towards our own self culture self cultivation all that is service या तो एक पुराना टेस्ट छोड़ना है पुरानी हैबिट हमको छोड़नी है बार बार बीमार पड़ने की इट्स अ बैड टेस्ट दैट वी हैव इट्स अ बैड टेस्ट दैट द बॉडी हैज आल्सो बिकॉज़ इट इज अ हैबिट कि भैया टाइम टू टाइम बीमार तो सब पड़ते हैं है ना इट्स अ हैबिट तो वही हैबिट हमको चेंज करनी है कि क्यों क्यों पड़ना है टाइम टू टाइम बीमार नहीं पड़ना as mother says that even death is a bad habit so the cells have to be reminded that uh, their origin is divine which is immortal and if they they can also do it they, they don't have to die in order to live again so slowly even that can go into the cell 
Yeah, so what more here uh, before we go ahead on the next paragraph? So I think uh, what matters to us again and again, I, I personally reiterate for myself, this little paragraph consisting of maybe eight, ten lines. You know, we may read it and we may just read another one and the life may go on. But the thing is that it has to be put into practice. Now the next time each one of us who is attending or listening later to these sessions, you know, when this trigger comes from outside, when the wrong suggestion comes from from within my thoughts, you know, the old patterns of thoughts, that now what would happen, I'm going to fall in. You know, at the very instant, one has to recognize and one has to reaffirm that no, you know, this time I'm going to be well. And feel that confidence in the body. You know, feel that uh, unshakability in the body. When we are either writing down that affirmation or reaffirming in the mind. You know, because if not put into practice, this is just like how many of these books will be read and it will give us maybe nothing. So parallelly, we have to take time, we have to immerse in the practice of what all we are reading every day. You know, it may be four lines that we read. We may not take up much, but uh, if it is put into practice, that's what matters. That becomes a part of my life, it becomes a part of my being. So it's, it's important to maybe read less, but practice more. You know, we read more and practice less for a very long time. It may have its own effect, but it's good to maybe read a little. Aapne subhe char line padh li. Four lines you have read in the morning. But, and now to gauge how much have I practiced during the day. Am I still allowing the wrong suggestions to come? How am I able to overcome? You know, am I reaffirming the positive thoughts? Am I reaffirming the higher, loftier thoughts? Or am I listening to the wrong suggestions? You know, then to see our own gauge, our own progress, not to really judge our progress, but to see that yes, I am able to make a little bit of shift here and there. So it's good to, I, I feel that to practice more and maybe read not that much. You know, to contemplate more and to put it into bodily practice, physical practice. So then even that little paragraph, which I may have brushed aside after reading five paragraphs after it, you know, then that gains, has gained stature within. You know, that has put his light within ourselves and now it's in an action. And once in action, then the body doesn't forget. It's very good. You know, we may forget words that we read. But once we have physical experience of what we practiced and experimented with, that we will not forget that easily. This is also true with children. You know, when we make children learn, if the child has made roti or, you know, whatever, baked his own cake only once, that stays with him. But if he has learned a lesson about baking and not done baking, he will forget. You know, bitter bits and pieces he may remember, but that practical visceral experience is not with him. You know, so body has a memory and whatever we experiment with our body consciousness, that is retained. That's true education. So the emphasis, just to reiterate, is on practice. Whoever is listening, we all, all of us, we have to practice and not allow wrong suggestions to rule, to change them into good suggestions. And then it becomes a habit to remain immersed in good suggestions. We lose the bad things. So, I think then we can we take the next one. Yeah, anything more here before we move ahead?
one thing more which is coming to me here is uh, what help at times we may be able to completely reject you know and uh, feel that confidence in the body that i am well and feel it in the body that yes you know i'm taken care of at times depending on the intensity of the situation uh, it may not be easy to feel the affirmation in the body you know because as if there is an intensity in that outer negative suggestion another thing which works here is also that okay if if mother wants to uh, for, for me to go through this i will go through this so that also parallelly in parallel because again context to context the things will be different so i have seen with myself that at times i am able to negate it completely and naturally feel a very positive affirmation in the body level that yes i am going to be well no matter what at times it feels that maybe i have to go through this you know so then to even take it to a higher loftier level and to say that if mother wants me to go through this i will go through this so just basically going back to that strength within us that we have that what will go through this of course this inner strength that we have you know so there also you are strengthening yourself even when you are saying that yes whether it is whatever disease that i have to go through again i will go through you know there also you are reaffirming your strength and not weakness so both ways uh, it can be because it at times it is uh, somehow for growth of consciousness it is good for us to go through that experience you know it's grounding that experience you know we are back on the ground again and gain more strength within us so yeah i have seen that both of these hold true at times especially regarding for, for my own self i see that for example cancer you know people may think that oh it can have a remission again and you know how do you know whether you are cured or not and i tell myself that of course i don't know whether i am cured or not and i don't have to know if i need to go through it again i'll go through it again you know so that keeps me grounded and i don't have to reject reject and you know what will, what if it happens again if it happens again then i'll go through it again you know so in that sense i will share it that it keeps us grounded Okay, so then we can take up uh, this thing from the mother. This was from Shiro Bindo, and then uh, yeah, anyone would like to read? Yes, the mother. The most important thing for good health is control over the mind, because the body obeys almost totally what you believe. when you believe that you are ill you become more and more ill if you believe that this is that this or that will cure you there is much chance that it will do so right thinking is most necessary for good health yeah maybe this too you can take this much also the mind is the master of the physical being only one doesn't know how to use one's mind quite the contrary not only does one not know how to use it but one uses it as badly as possible the mind has a considerable power of formation and a direct action on the body and usually one uses this power to make oneself ill for as soon as the least thing goes wrong the mind begins to shape and build all possible catastrophes to ask itself whether it could be this whether it could be that if that is the way it is going to be and how it will all end please go ahead well if it, instead of letting the mind do this disastrous work one use the same capacity to make favorable formations simply for example to give confidence to the body to tell it 
that it is just a passing disturbance and it is nothing and that if it enters a real state of receptivity the ailment can go away as easily as it came and that one can cure oneself in a few seconds if one knows how to do that one gets wonderful results you know and as i was sharing that when we practice these wonderful results only they keep us self motivated and that we want to then practice even more and even more because we see the result it's very tangible how it actually becomes just a passing disturbance and goes off like that yeah because nothing in the being is wanting the illness and yeah Yeah. Anyone wants to share anything here? Any experience or any reflection? When we talk about uh, mindfulness. the practices of mindfulness the practices of maybe concentrating the mind as mother says you know, concentrating the mind at a particular center or breath it's a very very good one can say fine tuning of the mind you know you are making a tool which is now ready to be used and is not abusing you instead so uh, it's very very helpful is parallelly we can thank you parallelly we can uh, go ahead and continue you know all these practices of taming our monkey mind to be able to concentrate for as long as one wants initially starting from 2 minutes 3 minutes 5 minutes making 10 minutes half an hour 50 minutes 1 hour then throughout the day we are in a concentrated point you know so it's very very good that we parallelly practice otherwise when we are suddenly ill you know and now we want to use the power of the mind we won't be able to use it so if it's like a sword you know if all the years you are not taking care of the sword and it's getting rusted you know and then now the war is in front you are in the battlefield you try to take out that sword it's stuck inside because of the rust you know it doesn't even come out you know how will we make use of that sword so it those of us who are artists they are using their brushes and tools they keep it clean and neat and you know in a position that it is to be used again and again so just like that mind is a tool and it has to be kept in a condition that it is useful and not useless which is right now the condition not even useless but it is now disastrous right now mother says you know yes that how we keep on making wrong formations in the mind unknowingly and she says well if instead of letting the mind do its disastrous work so this is what it's happening right now so useful work forget not even neutral it's doing actually disastrous work so like a servant you know imagine a lord a master has got a servant and the servant really is very eager to serve yes i will serve i will serve and doing all the things ulta pulta you know all the things he wire to take medicines in the plants and you know all the things at the wrong places so then that servant master would say that please you know forgive me and find a new place you know i can't keep you here so better that servant is neutral for You know, and then helpful, so that it's not at least disastrous. So to make it neutral, we do the practice of shamata. You know, shamata meditation, where we bring the mind to a one-pointed attention on breath. You know, we are trying to make it neutral. At least it stops doing the disastrous work, right? But there is a limit to shamata also. because it's not just enough to remain neutral one has to do helpful work you know so then become comes the power of affirmation so you are not only neutral but affirming the highest possible that you can think 
so you are making good use of thought and i know what you know uh, i know that i am taken care of and the mother knows the best and i will do my best in this situation so you are making a positive thought positive affirmation so not only neutrality but optimism positivity so all this is a cultivation all this is what we have to do like we do in gardening it's so you know we have so many good examples in nature how this happens not only we have to sow good seeds but we also have to weed all the things which are not required so that they are not eating up the nutrition for the things that we have sown weeding uh, then again making holes in the ground so that the air comes in putting water at the right time again weeding again weeding see this is so uh, again reflective you sow the seeds only once the only thing that you repeat and keep repeating is weeding also the other thing that you repeat is nurture the fostering you put fertilizer you put all the things which are good for the growth of flowers or whatever you have sown then every day or day after day you what do you put you put water you give sunshine this you do repeatedly seed you have sown once you know so vigilance weeding weeding is required daily dusting of our homes is required daily you know, repeatedly nurturing fostering supplying all the things okay rice over you bring more rice that is also required repeatedly but the seed once sown then it will be taken care of by the process of nurturing fostering and by the post process of weeding because if you don't foster enough and you don't take off the weed then the weed will go grow so much that the seed will i don't know you will not be able to see what what did you sow actually so this is what we have to immerse in day to day life practical yoga this is practical yoga every day am i weeding enough or am i giving fuel and petrol to the weed then i i should not wonder what is happening to my life because i am fueling my weed fostering what is good in us fostering all of us have good qualities all of us have positivity fostering that positivity you know so what mother was sharing that well instead of letting the mind do this disastrous work if we can cultivate the positivity let's go to the lines again one use the same capacity to make favorable formation so we have to know that we are making formations all the time we are making formations all the time we are engaged in it day to night even in dreams we are making formation now the same formations can i make those formations which are helpful for me so in same capacity to make favorable formation give confidence to the body to tell it that it is just a passing disturbance and it is nothing and if i am truly in a state of receptivity i'll be taken care of i am taken care of so give this confidence to the body feel the strength in the body that we are with the mother all the time and we don't have to be afraid of anything if we are you know imagine that you are in the physical presence of mother all the time you are in the ashram around the mother all the time you know how would you feel that you are taken care of mother is looking after everything that needs to be taken care of So having that confidence, like the child is so confident in the lap of the mother. Mother says that when you are sleeping, sleep as if you are sleeping in my lap. Even if we have tried it once, we will know how it feels. So to forget about other laps that we want to crave for in our lives and to 
sleep in mother's lap. And right now, whatever physical condition we are in, to take the responsibility of that. You know, that really, what mother says here, mind is the master of the physical being. This means that whatever physical condition I am in right now, to a very large extent, I have created it. If I have created it, I can also cure it. And this mother says that this power of formation from the mind has a direct action on the body. Direct action. The moment you think anything, whether anything is negative or positive, directly acting into the body. Because as mother says, body is docile instrument. It's very innocent. Like a clay, you put one impression on the clay and the clay absorbs that impression. You know, soft clay. So mind has a considerable power of formation and a direct action on the body. See how empowering this can be. What In whatever bad, sad situation right now I may find myself in physically, if I have put all these impressions on myself that I am the power that has made this you know, filthy state, then I am the one which will change the filthy state also. That is where we have to take it. We take the onus on our own head. There is no other divine sitting somewhere outside of us. We are mother's force in action. We have to make changes at physical level. Yeah, so I think there is lot to be practiced here, lot to be practiced here, whatever we have read so far. Yeah, so we can take any uh, last sharing experiences or reflections if there are any. I am suggesting that we should not take more because there is let, let us practice what all that we have read today. Yeah. Yeah, anything? Anyone? I more than once had a, the experience that maybe I was feeling a little sick or uh, and, and I was not taking good care of what I was eating, uh, my habits. And, and then uh, this led me to, to say, okay, I have to make some order to start eating better and regulate some, some habits. And this happened many times, like when my mind changed, and I, I like put myself in another mindset and, and think okay now I'm going to, to take good care of this I I started feeling like the, the body started recovering before even I I changed anything like the, the, the mindset changed and the body then was almost immediately feeling better it, it, it was something truly Remarkable. Uh, I felt more than. Yeah, I think these are the ex experiments, practical experiences, which actually make us to practice even more. You know, when we get these results, practical results, yes, they keep us motivated. Also, to I think though for those of us who are really interested in doing Sri Aurobindo's yoga, you know, one thing which I feel is that in Savitri there is a line that comes how we engage ourselves in uh, 
business on of unnumbered lives it's uh, when i read it for first time it was like a big uh, slap on the face also and we do that all the time how we keep ourselves engaged in so many lives at once it doesn't serve anyone it doesn't serve anyone so to uh, because whatever we are engaged with in business of unnumbered lives is just our own judgments and opinions and ideas and how this should happen and how that should happen it's nothing really we don't know nothing about other person's life you know what is the true unfolding for another person you know, how do we know we don't even know our own un unfolding you know so to leave that baggage aside and to really focus on blossoming ourselves as human beings just to say yeah because whenever we nurture and foster our own self and in the process actually we are nurturing and fostering many other lives we, we may not even know so i think this is very good to if those of us again for ordinary lives if we want to live we can go on engaging in as many lives as possible but i think that if i'm serious about sadhana in terms of mothers and sure in those yoga then there must be a purity in the being and there is there must be a in gathering of consciousness rather than being engaged at so many fronts at so many levels in the name of relationship you know family whatever friends all that and it serves everyone everyone partakes of that joy which i get within when i am pure in my sadhana everyone partakes of that joy that's the beauty you know like a rose a rose when it's a rose truly you know it gives joy to so many countless others fragrance to countless others and each one has the power of blossoming we have to make that blossom yeah so we can take anything last and then we to do Yeah, I just thought I'll just share it. Uh, I'm sharing some poetry. Two, three lines. They are not much. See how we keep ourselves busy, and then we are not able to tame our mind. Yes, it's a very good reflection of how we keep ourselves busy. Now this comes in the parable for the search of for the soul, and Savitri has to go within and dig out her soul consciousness. See, there is a tireless running to and fro. a haste of movement and a ceaseless cry the hurried servant senses answer a pace to every knock upon the outer door this is what where the habit has to change every little thing when another person says everything that you hear taste touch smell you know to every knock upon the outer door the hurried servant senses answer a pace why hurried because they are not yet refined yeah, they are crude senses so in shorbindo yoga we we don't have to shun the senses we have to make them refined you know so they are jaldi jaldi you know whatever matlab whatever interpretation they can take out from that particular knock on the door they will take it yes 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 this is what it means the hurried servant senses answer a pace to every knock upon the outer door what is why do we have to find meaning in every thing that we hear or see or touch and smell why why do we have to make connect the dots with it in that we waste our energy bring in times visitors report each call so what are the servant senses doing they are not they are they want to be good servant you know so what what are they doing they are giving every little trigger on the door to the master 
much of this came much of this came much of this came master doesn't have to do anything with all that comes you know every moment <laughs> bring in times visitors report each call admit the thousand queries and the calls you know you would see in big offices what happens when you get higher and higher position you don't answer each call you have technicians to answer those calls you are not answering those calls admit the thousand queries and the calls and the messages of communicating minds and the heavy business of unnumbered lives and all the thousand fold commerce of the world this is what we have to get rid of if we want to truly get in touch with you know what is true in us even in the tracks of sleep is a scant report in sleep also we are thinking what we were thinking in the daytime same thing is happening in the sleep then we get up from the sleep and try to make sense of what i thought in the sleep <laughs> although you know dreams have their own significances and there are times when dreams come which are significant you know, if they can be very helpful but many a times they are just like repetition of what we have been thinking in the day time if we are not conscious so when will be when we will not drain energies at these places then we will put energies parallelly you know, where they have to be put which makes our life uh, you know really beautiful let it blossom like a flower mother says life has life has to blossom like a flower not smell like a dream no way she said that that life has to smell like a dream we would have followed if she would have said that but she didn't say that <laughs> so let us be you know, good child to the mother yeah so let us not answer all the calls and all the knocks upon the door many of them are unnecessary we can just be brushed aside and let us be obediently sitting in front of the high command like savitri obediently she sat in front of high command time life death all passing incidents nothing matters the inferior nature born in ignorance then took too large a place and must be pushed aside so we will end here and we will wish for everyone to practice whatever we have read may we all be able to practice with all the challenges that we may get in the coming days regarding physical emotional mental health and may we be able to have make those positive formations which we can on the time thank you